All right, Alvis Rubitz here, AR for short, and we're talking about this daggum giveaway that the John Lovells of the world are trying to get you to sign up for. They got some prizes, they got gun belts, they got war poet pistols, they got fancy getaways to exotic places and ports call. Um, you don't even get on a cruise ship, so well, I'm a little bit bummed about that one. But if you want to be part of this, you gotta head on over and sign up and you gotta smash that subscribe button down below. And I'm gonna tell you right now, it's complicated. Hard to do. I tried to find the button and it's it's all over the place. They won't even hit it for you, which is ridiculous. But if you wanna fly around the world for free, this might be your time to shine, baby. Cause we're going. I'm gonna go. I think that's how they're paying me for this, uh, this here little advertisement. All right, hey folks, welcome back. What I want to give you today is a really cool tip regarding covered concealment, specifically popping up over the top of it or going left and right. So I was out on the range and we were filming some torture test stuff and, and I'm preparing to do a review of this X95 and this tip just kind of came to me when my videographer said, all right, now pop up over the cover. And I'm like, well, I, I don't like to do that. And then I had to explain why. And then it turned into this neat little pro tip for you. And then I had to figure out how to adapt this weapon system to be able to do it, which was a neat little exercise and improvise adapt overcome which is really good and I want to be able to lead us as we start to adapt our equipment to what we want to be able to do on any given battlefield. Guys, make sure you don't miss this video that's forthcoming. A lot of you think you're subscribed and you're not. Only 40% of our viewers are actually subscribed. So make sure you hit that subscription button and toggle notifications bell to all so that you make sure you get our illustrious reviews when they do actually drop. Now before we hit the range and I give you this tip that I think you're really going to benefit a lot. I want a little bit of a rabbit trail, a tirade to talk about a beef I have regarding cover and concealment. It is wonderful for us to get out on the range, do some static stuff, shoot and just sharpen skills. That's awesome. Then we start doing a little bit more dynamic stuff where we're moving, running and gunning and using cover and concealment. And that's awesome too. But at some point we got to stop just doing drills. And I want us to flip a switch and actually try to imagine that we're in a scenario and we're fighting. Now, when it comes to cover and concealment and actual scenarios or fight, there's only one opinion on a battlefield that matters regarding how well or how poorly you used a piece of cover and concealment. And it's not the camera over your shoulder. It's not the spectators to the side or back. It's the bad guy that you're fighting. I teach this in my pistol two class and also my rifle two class. If you want to check out those courses, we have the entire courses on the network. You can join our network link down below and take our classes digitally in case you can't get into a physical one. Anyway, guys, it is only the enemy perspective that really matters. Whether you were easy to hit or hard to hit too many people are up running and gunning and they're exposed to the battlefield for a very long time and bad guys because they're ambush hunters are hunkered down and waiting for you to drift into their sights so that they can just light you up and so you may be feeling like you're doing great but force on force were to reveal you're stupid easy to kill so make sure that we're trying to minimize our exposure and we're also thinking how often we're exposed to threats without further ado i'm going to get out on the range because i feel like i really nailed this you're going to really benefit from this tip so let's head on out to the range Now you wanted me to raise up and shoot, and the problem with doing something like that is you're such a high silhouette right here, and I'm exposed to the whole battlefield. You look how much of my body is exposed. But if I was able to get lower like this and drop down, man, I am just kind of peeking up above it, and it doesn't hurt my shooting at all. So it's a different way to do it. Whenever you raise up, now I'm exposed to the entire battlefield. And bad guys will give the natural preeminence of threat to whatever raises up. In nature, it's kind of like posturing. It's kind of like, oh, there's the biggest threat. So whenever you can pop out to the side, if someone else popped up up top, all the bullets are going to go toward the guy who popped up, not the one who popped sideways. This allows me to cut the pie real, real thin. And that's very, very good versus raising up. You don't do it unless you have to. Now, like if you imagine, yeah, if, uh, awesome fire superiority. You got a bunch of cops surrounding a crack house 
you've gassed it. They can't even look out without getting hit with huge white light. And you just got them surrounded. You got Pete's on the perimeter. You're sending in dogs or robots or whatever. You can kind of post up on a car hood and you're like, oh, you're breaking the principle. I'm like, I think we got it, bro. We got it. We got fire superiority. We can do it kind of whatever we want. But whenever you're pinned down and kind of like those millimeters uh, may uh, count, you do not have fire superiority, but you're trying to gain it and use cover and you have to raise up over something, being a smaller silhouette is a really big deal. I want to have my cake and eat it too. And that means I can shoot fast and accurate enough, which is good. So there's fast and accurate but I'm also not much of a target. We harp a little too heavy on fast and accurate shooting. Well, meanwhile, we're kind of standing out in the open and we're really easy to hit. Bad guys are ambush hunters. And that means after the first few shots, people get down, retreat into corners, stick a muzzle uh, through a door crack, or they get low and kind of hide. And so they don't just stand out there like IPSC targets. So when in doubt, just don't be out there ready to be a target. And so having a little bit obscure, sexy shooting positions like that. It has to do with prepping my body. Right here is my normal shooting stance. And for here, because of where the magazine is, I did something a little bit goofier. I snaked through and came like this. And then I grabbed my optic so I could raise up and basically hit it right there. Wonderful. For an M4, it's a little bit easier because I don't have this getting in the way of where my arm wants to turn. Anyway, improvise, adapt, overcome. It had a, it, this is a different weapon system for me and trying to practice that technique required a little bit of a shift for me, but uh, training hard, training smart, and I'm learning, guys, I'm learning. Learning's fun, that always pisses people off. My gun, I get to do what I want. Peace. All right, that's it? No, 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 uh, we gotta do the video close. Close the video. This video is closed. No, I mean, like, you gotta like remind them to subscribe and join the network. Subscribe, join the network. Why are you grabbing the mic like that? It's completely unnatural. <laughs> Subscribe to the channel, like, comment, share. This is a terrible close. We got a network, training's there, it's gonna be cool. Uh, giveaway's coming up. <laughs> is anyone still watching? <laughs> See you guys.